and welcome back. I'm Mary Jo, also known as Sojo, and this is my channel where I talk about all my quilty stitchy things. And today is my weekly update number 45, and it is Sunday, December 17th, 2023. Christmas is just around the corner, and it's been a week. So last week I had had a few goals and I had only met one. Well, this week I did met all of those goals plus a little bit more. I managed to quilt a quilt. I got the binding done on two more quilts. My November Cotton Cuts Gnomes, I got all those blocks done and I managed to sew it into a quilt top. Plus I got two more quilt tops finished and I cut out two more sew sampler projects. Not to mention the cross stitch and knitting and the diamond painting. So I made a lot of progress this week. So let's talk about it. The first thing I did this week, well, not the first thing I did this week, but the first thing I want to show you is what I quilted on the long arm. And this is what I quilted on the long arm this week. This is my October Cotton Cuts Gnomes. And I quilted it with this Witch's Hat Pantograph. And we'll go in, take a closer look at it. And there's a look at the top. As we come down the bottom, as you can see, those witches hats are quilted in it. Now, since this is more of like a Halloween theme, that's why I went ahead and put the witches hats, even though there really isn't a witch in there. But that's okay. I think it still works with the bats, which that bat block is my favorite block. And if we look on the back, which is just white, You can see those witches hats popping out again. And I just put the white on the backing because I plan on just laying over this as a couch, so nobody's really going to see the backing anyway. So what else has I done? I finished the binding on two more quilts. Now last week you had saw where I had attached it to the front and I still had to flip it over to the back and sew it down, which I did and I will hang those up in a minute. Now, I do get questions about how I like to do binding, whether I do it by hand or machine. My preferred method is by machine. I have sewed it down by hand a couple times, um, but I do prefer the machine. And there's a couple different ways to do binding. Well, not, there's more than a couple. I know, like, my mom just, like, uses the backing, makes it a couple extra inches and just kind of folds it in and then doesn't do a minor border and that's fine too. Um, a lot of people will sew it to the front, flip it to the back. Some people flip, sew it to the back and flip it to the front. My preferred method is sewing it onto the front and then flipping it over onto the back and then sewing it down. Now, when I do that, I do use, it's a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch seam allowance when I sew my binding onto the front. I I have it where I can just line it up on my walking foot because I'll use a walking foot and where I do it, it's more than a quarter inch, but it's perfect by the time I flip it over and then I sew it in the back. I'll do like a stitch in the ditch on the front and it catches it in the back. I don't like sewing it on the back and flipping it over to the front because from what I've seen, it usually leaves like a seam line down the back and if you're using the same color of thread as the binding, that pops out. So I don't particularly like that, but everybody should do what works for them. Now also, when I do binding, when I first started doing binding, I had this little tuck method. <laughs> Instead of sewing the, the ends, where you start and you finish when you're binding all the way around, where you created like a little pocket and you, and you kind of tucked the end of the binding in there. And that's how I did my binding for a while. However, whenever I do that and flip it over, it always left a little bump. So I don't prefer to do that anymore either. I do join them after I sew them all the way around and I do do that diagonal seam. Well, I cut it so there's that two and a half inch grip gap because I use a two and a half inch binding and then I flip it over to the back. And to me, I think it works out just about perfect because there's the back and there's the front. And that's how I prefer to do my binding. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just means that's what I like and everybody should do what works for them. You know, I have never entered a quilt into a quilt show. 
for uh, for judging. And I've heard some people say, depending on the quilt show you're in, you have to do a hand um, a hand sewn binding. And then I've heard others say you don't have to. So I don't really know. And if you're going to enter into a quilt show, I guess check what they want. But my preferred is still a machine binding. All right, let's hang them up and take a look at it. So this is the first one, the binding's all done on. Now this is the Woodland Frolic pattern from Cory Yoder with her apricot and ash line. And when I quilted it, I quilted it with this Woodland Creature pantograph that has like the little, I don't know if they're porcupines or hedgehogs, either one, and some foxes, which is the little characters, <laughs> the little critters in here. So let's take a look at it. So there it is, and it has that striped binding all the way around it. And I do like a good striped binding. Now, in the pantograph, you can start to see some of the little critters that are in there with the fox. I see a fox right over here. And there's the peace fox up there. All right, and we'll take a look at the back here. And there's a look at the back with my label right there in the corner. Now the back is a pieced backing. I'm trying to see if I can get a good view of <laughs> all of it, which is not gonna happen. <laughs> but the backing was literally all the extra, the leftover fabric I had, which I pieced any way I could and made a backing. And talking about piece backing, I also finished the piece backing for my Lori Holt Vintage Christmas Quilt, which I will show in a minute. I forgot to mention that earlier when I was mentioning all the things I accomplished this week. So let's hang up the other quilt I put the binding on, which was the Cotton Cuts Gnomes. And this is the other quilt I put the binding on, on this week. Now this is the August Cotton Cuts Gnomes. And I quilted this with that sun pantograph, just because those gnomes are kind of pale and they need some sun. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take a closer look at it. So there is the binding. And that binding is a bit of an ombre, so it does go from a light to a dark. But it is all finished. And we'll take a look at the back and the label, which again is just white. There's my label. The signs on the back are popping out. So with those two quilts, having the binding done, that means I have another 10 quilts that I can do another trunk show with. However, I wanna wait, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm trying to get all of my gnomes done by the end of the year. Now, except for Christmas, because I won't get Christmas until later in the month, but I went January through November done. <laughs> so I've got a couple more to throw the binding on and then I'm gonna do a trunk show once I get all of those done. I plan on doing the binding on September and October this week. I plan on putting November on the long arm this week and then quilting it the following week. So I can throw all of those in that trunk show. So hopefully that'll be coming out soon. And then once I get January's gnomes, I can do a trunk show of just the 12 months of my gnomes. So look for that. Now, what else did I do? Well, as I said, I finished the piece backing for my Lori Holt vintage Christmas quilt. Let's take a look at it. And this is my piece backing for my Lori Holt vintage Christmas quilt. Now this block right here that I put in the center was an extra block that I had made during it, so I put it right there in the back. So this is going to be the backing for this. And just again, here's a quick glimpse of that quilt. Let's fold it up. There we go. Now, I said there was a lot of leftover fabric with that. Let me show you. 
So I made the quilt, made the quilt top, and I still have all of this extra scraps, which what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these and cut them up and put them into my pre-cut sections. For my five inch, my five by 10 inch, my 10 inch, and my two and a half inch strips, and my two and a half inch, uh, two and a half inch strips. So we'll go ahead and take a closer looking at this backing I put together. So we'll take a look at this backing. Just kind of put things together, however, and I did not pay attention to the directional fabrics. I literally just put them together however they would fit. Move over, there's that center block. So the yellow snowmans and the blue snowmans are going in different directions, but that's okay. I'm all right with it. The gingerbread are going sideways. So aren't the reindeer. And come back over here to that, um, recipe fabric, which doesn't really matter because it goes in all different directions anyway. So that's the backing I'm going to put on my vintage Christmas quilt. So let's go back to the gnomes, the November gnomes. Like I said, I made all of those blocks and I put it together in a quilt top. So let's hang it up, take a look at it. So this is the November Cotton Cuts gnomes. They're all done together, the boy gnome and the accent block. And then we come down here and that's supposed to be the girl gnome and the accent block. Although I think the girl gnome looks more like a turkey, but that's okay. It's still on theme for Thanksgiving. So with the November Cotton Cuts gnomes all sewn together, I only have December left to sew. So. Like I said earlier, I plan on quilting, or I'm not, not quilting, I plan on binding the September and October this week. Hopefully I get this on the long arm and then I can bind it the following week. So I will have January through November done before the end of the year. So that's my goals for the end of the year. I don't really have any Christmas goals I'm working on, but I do have that one goal for the end of the year. So let me know, what are your goals for either Christmas or by the end of the year? Are you working on Christmas projects for somebody? It's getting close. Or you just have some goals for the year? Let me know. Okay, so what else did I get done? I got two more quilt tops and they're both so samplers from you know, we're I'm about two years ish a hop behind, <laughs> but let's pull them up, take a look at them. Now this is the first top quilt top I finished. Well, it's not the first, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Here we go. This is the pattern, and this was in Stitches quilt pattern, and this was from the Lori Holt line of fabric called Stitch, and they used a Jolly Bar. So. We'll go take a closer look at it. There we are. Now this is not a very big quilt. According to the pattern, it is 40 and a half by 46 and a half. Now I didn't actually measure it, but we'll go with those measurements. Another quilt top I finished this week was the star flower quilt pattern from the sew sampler box and it was made with actually a six piece fat quarter bundle and some foundation paper piecing it did the square in the square little square in the square foundation piecing box we'll hang it up take a look at it so according to the pattern this measures 44 by 63 and a half let's go take a closer look so we're going to start up here at the top and work our way down. Then 
and we're coming to the bottom. And because that's not enough, I started on two other quilt projects. I'll cut them out anyway. And they're both so sampler projects. So, I believe this is the December 2021 box. And this is the first one I cut out from this ambience. And this was from a Zen Chic Petite Jelly Roll. And I have all of the pieces cut out. And I've got a bunch of things penned together, ready to take to the sewing machine and sew. Because again, you know, I have to pen everything. <laughs> so there's all my pens. So that's the first one I cut out. And then I also started cutting out this, which I believe is from November 2021. And this is the Shooting Stars quilt pattern. And it was from a line from, I think it was April Rosenthal, Love Lily. So, let me pull that out. And I've got all of that pieced together. And I've got these penned for some stitch and flip. And then I got a bunch of squares back here penned. That'll be for some half square triangles. So, that's everything I worked on this week as far as sewing and quilting. Let me know what you worked on down in the comments below. So last week, I didn't do a lot. This week, I did a bit more. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to my cross stitch project. I make such a mess doing these things. I get stuff everywhere. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, let me pull out the design here. So, this is the project we are working on. Or I'm working on. And this is from Tiny Modernist. There we go. There's a better one. Here's what it will look like when it's all done. So last week I was still working on this big little pattern in the, in the center. Because this is broke up into 13 different parts. So I finished that center motif this week. And I started working on the framework. So there's the center, it's all done, follow your dreams. And then I started working on the borders and the framework with all of that white. And then I got a little board with all the white, so I went in and I filled this. It says, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. So I filled in that. So then I'm coming over here and working some more on this framework. And actually the border framework area is done in like six different pages. Now this frames and borders, it is included on each individual pattern, um, but it's also another free downloadable that's in six pages that you can do separately. So I'm kind of doing that first and then I can stick these little motifs are saying in and I chose to do this border before I do those just because it helps line things up better in my opinion. So when I started working on this I started up here in the corner and I did page one of all the framework and borders and then I got a little tired of using all the white <laughs> so I filled this in. So now I'm working on the page two which I'm almost done with you know the little borders and frameworks and then when I'm done with page two I'll fill that one in and so forth. But we've made lots of progress. So that center there is the biggest part of this and which took the most time. So these are much smaller and shouldn't take me as long as the center one. 
So this is on a giant piece of 14 count Ada. And that's where I am on that. So I worked on that as well. Now, what else did I do? Well, I'm still working on that knitting project. It's getting close to being done. Actually, I'm on my last ball of yarn that I have. So it has to be done one way or the other soon. <laughs> so I'm making this baby blanket. Well, it'll be this baby blanket right here. Now, before starting this up, it had been 10 years or so since I knitted anything. So I do consider myself a beginner even before that. And I have a hat I want to knit, but before I did that, I decided to jump into this and, and do this baby blanket just to kind of refresh my memory a little bit because I knew this baby blanket was easy because I made it for my daughter when she was a baby. And she's now 17. So this is where I'm at. So I had to re-familiarize myself with those knit and purl stitches, <laughs> which I did. And the other thing I have is my diamond painting. Now last week I told you about a little oops I had. And I had to go pick out a bunch of diamonds in here because I'd put the wrong color. But I picked them out and put the right one in and work on it some more. And this is where I'm at. I'm working right over there in that one little square, a rectangle. So that's everything I worked on this week. Let me know in the comments below what you're working on. Till next time. Bye.